So hi everyone, Phidias here from NeuroPsyQ and today we're going to be reviewing some of the histological features of the human brain. Uh, as we know the human brain is the core uh, structure of the central nervous system. So what are the key cells of our brain? Uh, you may have heard that uh, the majority of uh, uh, cells that carry out the great functions of the brain are the neurons. The numbers vary about the estimates of how many neurons we have. Some people say that we have about 15 billion neurons where others estimate uh, close to 100 billion neurons. Now the key thing here is that it doesn't really matter how many you have, it's really how you use them that uh, in my opinion is more important. Um, and that's the beauty of the central nervous system. Perhaps the most common cell in the brain are the glial cells and we typically uh, think of having 10 glial cells for every neuron and these really provide a lot of support for the neurons, uh, a lot of structure and allow them to function optimally on a day-to-day -day basis. So we'll make sure that we uh, can identify uh, neurons uh, and the two major types of glial cells, the astrocytes and the oligodendrocytes. Now what we're going to see today are very thin glass slides of brain tissue and it's important to know how these were generated. As we'll see in another video, we have to prepare tissue to be converted into these glass slides. And these are quite thin slides comprising about 5 microns thick of tissue. Now these are stained with a dye known as hematoxylin eosin that allows us to better differentiate certain aspects of the cells under the microscope. Hematoxylin, which is a purple dye as we'll see, stains nuclei whereas the, the pink that makes up the majority of the slide is the eosin staining the, the cytoplasm and the uh, processes of our neuronal cells. And, and, and to give you an estimate, um, the volume of this tissue here is probably one or two millionth the whole volume of the brain. So we'll, ju we'll just see how much detail we can resolve by looking at a very small portion of the brain. And today's uh, goal is to look at the cerebral cortex. This is the area of the brain that houses the neurons and try to understand some of the fundamental uh, organizations of how the neurons and the glia are organized in this pink piece of tissue. So without further ado, let's um, uh, take the slide and look at it under um, a microscope. Obviously we're not using a traditional microscope to look at this slide, but rather we are using a scanned digital image, which is um, a new and exciting technology that's uh, being incorporated into the um, uh, pathology and histology practice. And uh, just to kind of orient you, uh, what we see here is we see the full slide uh, that we uh, um, uh, scanned. We have a kind of um, an overview uh, panel here that lets us see the entire slide as we zoom in and out. And then here in the bottom we have a kind of magnification tool that allows us to see um, uh, things that we hover over at high power. What we have here is we have a, a section of the brain uh, and it's stained with um, hematoxin and eosin. Uh, hematoxin, as we'll see, stains nuclei or DNA and eosin stains protein-rich cytoplasmic uh, structures, which you can see are the dominant feature uh, at low power. What we're going to do here is we're going to um, review the um, uh, structure of the nervous system at both the uh, low power and high power view and see the kind of uh, repetitive patterns that uh, the brain uses to uh, conduct information um, between itself and other organs of the body. So at low power we see one of the fundamental principles of uh, uh, how the central nervous system is organized in large uh, mammals and particularly in humans and other advanced primates. We have this undulating ribbon um, at, on the exterior surface of the brain, which constitutes the gray matter. And we have this um, brighter pink um, uh, inner region, um, which is the white matter. And this, uh, again, is um, kind of a fundamental property of the, um, of the, uh, of the human uh, uh, neocortex, uh, because it allows um, the brain to have a very, very high um, surface to volume ratio which allows it to accommodate the large number of neurons found in um, advanced uh, species. Uh, you can imagine in lower species that have a, a relatively flat um, 
brain or a smooth brain, uh, known often as lysencephalic, um, the number of neurons that you can um, store in this gray matter would be much, much less. Um, so this is one of the key features of, uh, uh, of the central nervous system. These areas that um, balloon out are known as gyri, and when the cortical ribbon uh, buckles upon itself, as, as here, um, this is um, uh, a sulcus. You can see here we have some artifact, artifact of, uh, of the uh, tissue preparation, uh, where the tissue folded while we were preparing the slide. Um, and so just be wary that these are not actual uh, real structures. We see these um, donut-like structures, which are blood vessels found in the, both the um, surface of the brain, um, as well we'll see them um, also in the um, inner parts of the uh, neural tissue. One of the nice things about digitizing slides is that you can do very cool things that you can't do with a traditional microscope. Uh, you can use kind of these digital rulers to uh, measure uh, things like the thickness of the cortex. So in this particular case, uh, the gray matter is uh, three millimeters. Um, and the thickness um, in many studies have been has been correlated with the number of neurons and, and, and the kind of uh, intellectual capabilities of, of different species. So um, um, very, very useful uh, tools for doing quantitative analysis of, uh, of different regions. So you can see the thickness is relatively uniform. Uh, in, in this particular section, but uh, it varies uh, depending on where you are and the specific function of the cortex, as we'll as we'll uh, discuss. Um, importantly, there's two types of uh, um, uh, uh, cortical types that you will see in the uh, human brain. You have the neocortex, which is uh, a six-layered structure, as we'll see, um, and you also have a, um, a portion of the brain that's known as the allocortex, which is much more primitive um, and archaic and has three or four layers. And usually that's involved in kind of the uh, basic um, functions of, uh, of, the, um, uh, of the nervous system that, are, uh, that kind of transcend uh, animals. So things like memory and, 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 and uh, um, kind of um, functions like, uh, like fear, uh, are, are usually stored in these allocortex regions, uh, whereas higher order functions like uh, like movement and, uh, uh, and personalities are stored in uh, in the neocortex. And, and and one of the defining properties of, of humans and, and primates is uh, the relative massive amounts of neocortex compared to the more um, evolutionary um, uh, early. Uh, allocortex found in, in all animals. Um, let's uh, let's begin by looking at some of the more high power structures. So you can see uh, some interesting interesting uh, things that we we will talk about. Let's zoom in and first try to identify the key cells in the brain. So there are three main neuroglial types that are important to be able to recognize. You have these triangular shaped cells as shown here. These are your neurons, and uh, basically these are the, the cells of the brain that uh, carry out the electrical activity, uh, important for both involuntary and voluntary movements. They usually have a large uh, nucleus and this nucleolus that just uh, indicates that they're actively producing RNA and uh, transcribing um, the large number of uh, mRNA species and proteins required to carry out this important function. Uh, they usually have this triangularly shaped cytoplasm that points towards the surface of the brain. This is known as the apical uh, dendrite uh, that really uh, allows the, the neuron to communicate with other axons of other neurons. You'll see that there's two uh, cells immediately beside them. One is this very dark round cell this is uh, morphologically uh, an oligodendrocyte. Here you have an astrocyte, uh, and, 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 and these, these names represent what the cell looks like morphologically if you were to stain them with uh, uh, different uh, stains. Uh, the astrocyte, as the name suggests, has, uh, looks like an, a star, an astro, uh, which is the Greek word for star, and has uh, a, a fewer processes than, than, than the neuron. And then your oligodendrocyte, as its name suggests, has very few processes. Oligo, which means few, and dendrocyte means uh, 
cells with processes, right? So these are the three main cells of the uh, nervous system. As we said, the neuron uh, conducts a lot of the electrical activity and information from one region to the other. Um, and uh, inside and outside the brain, the astrocyte carries uh, very important supportive functions of the neurons, such as soaking up uh, toxic chemicals like glutamate that uh, can harm neurons when they're found in excess levels. And the oligodendrocyte is the key um, the cell of the brain that uh, will uh, myelinate the axons uh, in this thick um, um, fatty capsule that allows the neurons to conduct their electricity uh, at much higher velocities. Similar to how we have, um, uh, you know, we encase wiring in, in, in these uh, kind of in, uh, in insulations, uh, the myelin uh, performs a, a similar ins insulation function for, uh, for the neurons. Now you can see here, we see some kind of uh, processes. So this pink area, uh, which is stained with eosin, is mostly cytoplasmic processes from the axons uh, and dendrites of the neurons. And you can see them very, very nicely organized uh, uh, in many, many different directions. Um, and as we said, the hematoxylin is a is a very uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a basic dye, so it stains uh, um, it stains kind of acidic acidic uh, com uh, components of the cell, such as the DNA. Um, Eosin is in a, kind of an acidic dye, labels um, proteins. Uh, so this is why most of the cytoplasm uh, is, is, is eosin rich. We have some other structures here. Uh, these, red, these red particles, these are capillaries found within the cortex, um, which are, of course, important for supplying oxygen to the, to the brain. The brain uh, uh, constitutes about um, uh, one kilogram, so it, it's about one or two percent of our body weight, but um, takes up about... Um, 20% of our oxygen and, and, and glucose supply. Uh, and, and these are the vessels that really provide that energy to the brain uh, to allow it to carry out its important function. Now, what you'll notice is that the cells are not uh, randomly distributed in the, cor in the cortex. One thing that we can see is um, while we have all three cell types in the gray matter, when we go to the white matter, which is where the, um, uh, the axons lie, most of the uh, cells here are in fact... Um, oligodendrocytes, these, these very dark blue cells. And that's because a lot of the myelination happens in the uh, white matter, which is really uh, a large collection of neuronal axons and the oligodendrocytes that um, myelinate them. Of course, there are other, other cells as well. There's probably some astrocytes and some um, uh, neurons just at the periphery. But overall, we see that the vast, uh, the predominating cell type are these um, are these oligodendrocytes, which uh, again just speaks to how well organized uh, the the central nervous system is. So um, we have our white matter here, we have our gray matter here, uh, but even in the gray matter, there's um, um, I hope you can appreciate that that that, that the cells are organized in a very very stereotypical manner. First of all, we see these vertical columns um, that uh, kind of repeat over and over again. And these are the basic fundamental units of how the brain carries out certain functions. Um, and also we see um, perpendicular organizations. Uh, at the very superficial layer, we have um, a very hypocellular layer. Um, and then we see uh, 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 different patterns of and, and, and types of neurons uh, as we go deep into the, in, uh, into, the, uh, uh, into the cortex towards the white matter. So just reviewing these um, these six layers, we have the molecular layer. This is a relatively hypocellular area composed largely of axonal processes. Uh, a lot of the um, a lot of the neurons communicate in this area, and a lot of the communication actually happens in these columns. So um, these column these neurons all communicate in, in a network. Um, um, at, uh, and, and, and transmit information inside the column and then transmit it outside the column in a very, very kind of isolated manner. So we have the molecular layer here, uh, and then right beneath it, we see these uh, oligodendrocyte-like granular neurons. These are, uh, um, they look like granules of sand, uh, so they're called granular neurons, um, and they form this kind of 
perpendicular layer. Um, as we go deeper into layer three, we see the these uh, neurons here that are more pyramidal. They look like those triangular shaped neurons that we, we saw early on. So this is your external pyramidal cell layer. Here they are again. And then as we go deeper deeper into the into the cortex, we see that the columns are now made up of relatively um, granular uh, shaped neurons again. So this would be your internal uh, granular cell layer. So you have an external granular cell layer uh, and then an internal granular cell layer. And as we go again deeper, we see uh, larger collections of these pyramidal neurons, which form the internal granular cell layer. As we move deeper, we finally get to the uh, this area that's kind of hard to make out uh, because it has both pyramidal and granular cell neurons, uh, and this is known as a, a polymorphic layer uh, for that reason. And I hope you can appreciate that at low power here. We have our uh, molecular layer again. We have our our layer two, our external granular cell layer. We have, uh, as you can see in the kind of magnification window, uh, as we move deeper, we have our uh, external pyramidal cell layer, our internal granular cell layer, our internal pyramidal cell layer, and then our multi uh, multiform layer here, um, making up layer six of the cortex. Now again, these all work in these columns, um, uh, and, and they're very, very precisely organized to um, uh, take in and, 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 and transmit uh, information uh, in and out of these columns. Um, so layer four, for example, is the, the major input layer of these columns. It receives information from the thalamus. It then sends information to the molecular layer through these axons. And then these are transmitted um, to, um, to layer three and five, which are the major output uh, layers of, of these micro or mini columns. And then from layer three and five, uh, it will send information um, to other areas of the brain or, or down the spinal cord. So uh, these layers also have uh, different functions. So um, layer two uh, and layer one usually get information from other uh, cortical areas um, within the brain. So these uh, uh, transmit information from gray matter to gray matter, whereas, um, so that's layer two, that's the input from other brain regions, whereas the input for layer four is the thalamus, which is uh, kind of the major relay station uh, for information coming from, uh, from our external environment. Layer three sends information, uh, the pyramidal layers of layer three send information to other brain regions, whereas uh, layer five sends information to the basal ganglia and down the spinal cord uh, to regulate voluntary movement. So that's really the beautiful organization of the uh, of the cerebral cortex. So I'm going to zoom out again just to kind of uh, try, let us try to appreciate some of these key principles we learned. Again, we learned that the the cortex has both uh, white matter com comprised mainly of axons and oligodendrocytes, as well as gray matter that houses the um, um, the import, ever important neurons of the nervous system and these neurons are of course organized in, in a very very stereotypical manner and, and 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 that's really important because it's less important in my opinion than the number of neurons something has is how they're being used and how they're wired um, and that uh, and that really speaks to the highly organized way uh, that we saw that these uh, neurons are organized. Again, they form these mini columns that carry out quantum processes in the brain and store uh, kind of very fixed and defined information. And the different layers will regulate whether information is coming in and uh, will relay information out using the same principles based on these morphologically distinct neurons that we're seeing. So uh, what we covered today is an H and E stain, a hematoxin eosin stain. It's probably the most versatile stain in, 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 uh, in the uh, pathology lab, but there are of course other stains that accentuate some of the features um, of the nervous system. There are some stains that stain the white matter, as we'll see, such as your luxal fast blue, and there's some immunostains that label uh, the neurons specifically and allow you to better see the uh, this um, organization both at the layer, the perpendicular layers, and also the radially organized uh, mini columns. So let's stop there for today and uh, uh, in future lectures we'll see how these uh, layers are organized during development and go more into the functions of specific cells. So uh, 
I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that was informative. The key things that I think uh, are the takeaway home points of, of today's journey is that uh, our, our nervous system is comprised of three major cell types. We have neurons that uh, relay a lot of the electrical information and carry out the functions that we know are important for uh, brain activity. But perhaps the more uh, prevalent cells in the brain are the astrocytes and the oligodendrocytes. The astrocytes um, uh, is a very um, uh, uh, interesting cell that's, gain a, uh, that's gaining a lot of interest of how it's functioning in the brain. And you know, uh, really it's there to help support and uh, protect the neurons from any dangerous insults like uh, overstimulation. Um, we also have the oligodendrocytes and their, their role is more to uh, create uh, an insulation around the axons to uh, allow the electrical activity of our axons to travel at much higher speeds uh, than, than it would be possible without them. Of course there's other cell types as we saw, there's uh, uh, vasculature uh, that helps uh, provide blood to the brain uh, as well as a uh, dural covering and uh, uh, your leptomeninges that help provide uh, a protective barrier from the outside world. Um, and I think the key point uh, as we saw is that um, these cells are not just randomly distributed um, in the tissue but rather form very very um, um, deliberate uh, microstructures especially these micro columns that we saw that allow the brain to, to communicate uh, with different regions of our brain and also with um, 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 uh, distant organs like um, like muscles and um, our lungs to help carry out um, the basic um, uh, functions that are we require to live our day to day lives. In some future uh, uh, some future videos, we're going to look at more immature uh, uh, human human brains to see how these uh, very complicated structures are patterned early on during uh, brain development. Um, so um, if you enjoyed this video, um, if you want to learn more about the brain, please um, like, subscribe, uh, comment down below on what you would like us to cover, and uh, thanks for watching.